What's up folks, Mike here at Well In Watches. Welcome to the video. This is the uh, the fifth video uh, in this series. And if you haven't checked out the other videos, uh, then you can go back and uh, check them out. Um, but uh, in this video, we're gonna have a quick look at the, uh, the timing of the movement uh, that we previously uh, assembled. So I'm not gonna go over everything in detail in this video with regards to timing on how a time grapher works. That's uh, planned for a separate video. But we're gonna just go over how the timing's performing uh, the day after the movement has been assembled and uh, lubricated. I'm gonna make some quick adjustments um, just prior to testing it for a couple of days to see how the timing performs. So we have the time grapher uh, on and set and I've set it to a low period, uh, which will become more apparent when uh, the timing uh, time grapher video has been done. So we can set the, uh, the movement in the microphone. So the time grapher makes an audio noise uh, for the noise that's created in the escapement. But you can also uh, turn it to silent as well. So let's see if we can zoom in on the screen a little. So we might be able to see on the screen that the, uh, the rate here, that's how much time it'll gain or lose uh, in a 24 hour period. We have the amplitude and uh, we have the uh, beat error, uh, the lift angle, and uh, the frequency of uh, the movement. Now, all of these things I'm gonna go over separately in the, the time graph of video, uh, which is planned for later on. But we can see that the rate here is uh, 112 seconds uh, gain per day. So we want to get that down uh, to a more reasonable time period, but we can see that the amplitude is quite healthy. It's well over 300 degrees. Uh, the beat error is down to 0 0.2 milliseconds. And again, that's something we're gonna to touch on in another video. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the regulator on the movement uh, so that the timing uh, is improved because 112 seconds a day is far, far away from where we want it to be. We want to get it down to uh, maybe minus 10 to plus, plus 10 kind of area. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make adjustments to the regulator, which I'm sure you'll be able to just about see in the video. And uh, this part here on, on the balance cock, this is what's known as the, uh, the regulator. And this is what controls the, the rate of, of the movement. So if we push the regulator in one direction, uh, it will shorten the spring of the balance and that will increase the rate. And if we draw the uh, regulator to the other side that will lengthen the spring on the balance and therefore uh, reduce the rate which makes uh, the watch run slower. So you can see it's nearly fully on the left hand side so the rate is gaining quite a lot. If we were to push this regulator all the way across to the uh, opposite side we can see on the, uh, the graph here that the rate has now dropped to minus 300 seconds uh, which is really really bad so we don't want that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the regulator until we get a nice uh, pair of reasonably flat lines and a good rate. So we're gonna start off by pushing this across to the middle using a bit of pegwood so as not to scratch the, uh, the balance cock. So that's about the middle. We're gonna restart the timer so we can get a clear graph. We can see the rate is still a little lower at minus 102 seconds. So what we want to do is we want to shorten the spring a little bit more so that we can increase the rate. So we do that little by little. So at minus 80 seconds. Minus 49 seconds. And uh, when you're making these adjustments at home on your own time graphing machine, uh, you want to allow the movement a little bit of time to settle uh, before you make the next adjustment because it can change as the movement settles back into its rhythm, which is usually around about 20 seconds on a good movement. So we're still at minus 50 seconds, so we're gonna push that across and shorten the spring a bit more. And that's pretty close. So we're at plus 10 seconds, plus 11 plus 10. So that'll do for now. We can make final adjustments just prior to uh, fitting the movement into the case in a few days time. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to quickly test it in a couple of other positions. Now you could go crazy and you could test it in five, six positions uh, and some odd positions on the microphone. These microphones are fairly uh, movable in different positions. We're going to test it in just a few basic positions and see if the timing uh, changes. This, this will indicate if there's any issues uh, within the movement uh, that need to be addressed um, before everything is finalized. So the position we've got at the moment is dialed down. And what we're going to do is we're going to flip the microphone around uh, so that the movement is facing dial up. So we do that by simply rotating it like so. And we can allow the movement a few seconds uh, to settle into its position. And then we're going to re, uh, re uh, look at the rate. And we can see the rate is about plus nine, plus 10, plus 13. So it's not too far different from the, uh, the dial down position. And that's not too bad. And again, these, these uh, final adjustments will be made before the movement's fitted. So we've got reasonably healthy timing, uh, both dial up and dial down. Now we're gonna move the, uh, the microphone so that the pendant is up. We're gonna allow it a little bit of time uh, to settle into its uh, position. And we can see on the graph here that both of the lines are fairly straight and even throughout the graph, which is indicating that it's a fairly good and healthy escapement. And with the pendant up, we're seeing minus five seconds. And that's, uh, that's pretty good. And then we're gonna do the uh, pendant down. and allow that a few seconds to settle into its position. And you will find some minor deviation between the different um, points here. So the rate, the amplitude and the beat error, as we can see, the beat error has actually increased with the pendant facing uh, down. So that's something that can be addressed prior to fitting the movement uh, back in the case. But the lines are still flat, which means there's, there's still no problem with the escapement so far, really. Uh, and the rate is pretty good. It's got zero seconds there, plus four, plus seven, back to zero again. So again, yeah, the movement at the moment is pretty healthy, which it should be because it's just been assembled uh, and lubricated. And at the change in position, it quickly settles back into a good rate. So there's uh, no reason to expect that even in its current state before the final adjustment, that it's not going to keep uh, excellent time. So like I said, this is just a very uh, quick video touching up on uh, the timing of the movement. There are going to be some other videos where I'm going to go over how a time grapher works and how to read the different readings that come up on uh, time graphers because they can be quite confusing. And uh, that'll be in uh, later videos. I'm also going to show you how to solve problems with timing and uh, I'm going to find a um, an example movement to use um, where I can show you how those problems uh, crop up. Uh, but for now, uh, we're going to put this to one side and we're going to let it run uh, for a couple of days and then we're going to make the final adjustments to the timing uh, before fitting it back into the case. So we'll back, be back for the final uh, video in the series uh, on that. So until then, uh, hopefully you'll join me in the next video and uh, until then, take care and have fun.